welcome back to the channel. So far guys, we've discussed special forces assessment and selection. I've also given you a variety of physical fitness trainings that you can do to help you get in the best shape of your life, right? I've also given you, you know, some of the qualities that cadres will look for in assessing, you know, special forces candidates, all right? And we just started, you know, uh, covering the qualification. Course. And I know, you know, like you are very excited about all the information that I'm putting out, right? And you're getting antsy and you're getting motivated, right? But you're in a sister service, right? And your sister service, you know, doesn't have Green Berets, right? Every service has its version of, you know, special forces operator. But you don't want to go be a special forces operator in your service because you like the information that I'm putting out, you know, and you want to be a Green Beret instead, right? But I started this channel four weeks ago, so I didn't get to you in time, so now you're stuck, right? But don't worry, guys, because today we are going to discuss inner service transfer. So what exactly is the inner service transfer program? The inner service transfer program is a program that allows you to transfer from your current branch to the army. All right. Since this is a special operations channel, guys, I'm going to cover mainly the special operation aspect of this program only. However, you can also apply for other MOSs that are not 18 series or special operations, all right? So in this video, I'm gonna cover how to get from the Navy to SFAS and then to the Army, all right? Same thing with the Air Force to SFAS and then to the Army, right? And then Marine Corps, SFAS, and then to the Army. All right, guys, the uh, the process is similar for all three of the branches that I just listed. There might be minute details here and there, but at the end of the day, you still have to get your branch to release you. Then you can apply to the Army and eventually Special Forces. All right, with that said, guys, let's get into what your journey is going to look like if you decide to leave your current branch and join the Army in hopes of becoming a Special Forces Green Beret. First thing first, guys, I urge you to be very discreet as far as how you handle this process, all right? I want you to be very strategic as far as who you tell what and when you tell them, all right? Because based on personal experience, folks tend to act a little bit different once they found out you're trying to leave an organization for a different one, all right? That said, guys, if you're still interested in doing the inner service transfer, all right, here are the different steps that you need to take, you know, to make sure that everything comes to fruition. This is the strategy that I recommend using, guys, all right? If you are serious about doing this, first thing you need to do is reach out to a special forces recruiter, all right? You can go on GoArmySoft.com and get in contact with a recruiter, all right? Once you're in contact with that recruiter, you need to clearly communicate to him your intent of leaving your current branch and joining the Army and eventually joining Special Operations, all right? Um, once he knows what your intentions are, he'll then pull up the requirements, right? Ask you a bunch of questions to determine whether you meet all those requirements or not. That SF recruiter is gonna help you, you know, get all the required paperwork together. He'll help you set up all your medical examinations, all right? He'll also help you get any waivers that you might need if for whatever reason you don't meet a certain standard. Simultaneously, while speaking with that soft recruiter, guys, you also need to be speaking with a big army conventional recruiter, right? Because that soft recruiter is gonna get you to selection. He's going to get you at a SFAS date, right? But that big army, that conventional recruiter, that's who's going to get you into the army. That's who's going to take you from your current branch and switch you over to the army, right? So you need to be speaking with those guys simultaneously to make sure you meet both set of standards. So you're done speaking with the army. You've met all the requirements to join the army, you've met all the requirements to join special operations, all right? Sticking to my strategy, I would then go back to my branch and inform my current leadership, you know, of my intent to do a inner service transfer. At that point, guys, you might get some blowback from your current leadership, right? You might get shunt out, but at the end of the day, 
We don't care about that, right? We're trying to switch over to the army to become a Green Beret and to go do shit to bad people, right? Guys, while you were working with your uh, Special Forces recruiter, you guys should have been working on the DD Form 368. That is the request for conditional release. That form releases you from your current branch, allowing you to join the army and eventually, you know, go to selection. That right. form has to be signed by you and your SF recruiter, all right? It also has to get signed by the first commanding general and your chain of command, right? And since that's the case, every commander in between has to sign and also write you a letter of recommendation. Whether the letters of recommendation are good or bad, guys, it doesn't matter. That DD form, you know, 368 has to go all the way to your branch's headquarter, right? So if you're in the Navy, that form has to go to Department of the Navy. If you're in the Air Force, that form has to go to Department of the Air Force. If you're in the Marine Corps, that form has to go to Marine Corps headquarters, right? So just because you get a bad letter of recommendation in between doesn't necessarily mean anything, right? They are not the final approving authority, guys. So I would urge you, if this is something that you're interested in, to push forward with the process regardless of what happens in between there. You've gone through the process and your DD Form 368 has made it all the way up to your branch's headquarter, right? And it gets approved, right? Once approved, that DD Form 368 is good for one year, all right? That gives you an entire year to leave your current branch, all right, and join the Army and the MOS that you want. Once that form is approved, your Special Forces recruiter that you've been working with is gonna then take that form, submit it to the schoolhouse here at SWIC, and then he's gonna get you a Special Forces assessment and selection date. So quick recap, guys, you met with your Special Forces recruiter, you spoke with your big army recruiter, you ensured you meet both of those requirements, right? You went back to your unit, let them know what your intentions are, you guys filled out the DD Form 368, and you've given that form to the Special Forces recruiter, who then turns it in and gets you a SFAS date. Once you've passed selection, guys, you're gonna go back to your unit, and then you'll then start working with your big army conventional recruiter, right? Because at this point, you know, the soft recruiter, the special forces recruiter, his job is done, right? His entire purpose was to get you an SFAS date and get you to selection, right? Once that's complete, he's out of the picture and now you're back to working with your big army recruiter, all right? His job from this point on is to get you, you know, into basic training, right? If you don't have an infantry background, if you do, he's gonna get you straight into infantry um, AIT. He'll get you into airborne school and then he'll get you uh, here at Bragg so you can start the qualification course. Guys, this program is very similar to the 18 X-ray program, right? I'll post a link down below for the 18 X-ray video that I did. I urge you to take a look at it if this is something that you're serious about doing. Guys, if for whatever reason you fail selection, right? Your DD Form 368, you know, that approval is still good for an entire year, even if you fail selection, meaning you can still go from your current branch into the army still, but you just won't be able to go as an 18 series soldier, right? You can easily go to the 82nd as an 11 Bravo or to the 82nd as a 12 Bravo, do two or three years there, and then reapply for selection later on in your career. Okay, if you want to exit the current branch that you're in, all right, it doesn't have to be special operation. You can still go as another MOS and then attend selection later on if that is truly your goal. Guys, if you decide to go this route, your ETS will adjust, you know, based on the contract that you sign with that big army recruiter, all right? So if you have two years left in the Marine Corps and then you sign a contract with the army for four years, all right, they'll take that two from the Marine Corps, that four from the Army, and you'll owe the government a total of six years. Guys, right, I hope this information was helpful, right? I hope it motivates you uh, to leave your current branch, you know, and join the Army and become a Special Forces operator so you can do bad shit to bad people, right? If you have any questions, guys, please post them in the comments below. I'll reach out to some other Special Forces recruiters that I know here back at Bragg, and I'll get you an answer, right? Until the next one, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Take care of yourself.